do you have a favorite interview? I mean, the Keefe D interview was probably probably my favorite, just because. Out of all of the hundreds of interviews you've done, yeah, yeah. I, I think the Keefe D one because what what I do is really um, uh, it, it's the purpose behind it is for for history, right? I, I am chronicling, you know, uh, the events of of this era while i'm alive of these important historical figures that in the future people will go back and reference that people will write book reports on and so forth and the tupac story is so important like tupac died 25 years ago 24 years ago and he's still huge he's still a huge figure you know I mean, you were a bad boy. You know, you, you know more than anyone how how crazy that era was with the East Coast, West Coast beef and Big E and so forth. You know, I just interviewed Slim from 112 yesterday. He talked about how how that whole time was. Um, and being that Tupac died at, you know, 20-something years old and, and he had so many incredible timeless songs and he had all these movies and, and he had so much drama off camera, you know, as well that and there's always been conspiracy theories about his death oh he's still alive oh uh, the government killed him oh shook had him killed and so forth it's that i i was the only person to actually sit down with someone in the car the only living person left in that car that murdered tupac and this is an old older man who's not in great health already that we don't know when his last day is you know, I was supposed to interview Dick, Dick Gregory and he died. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to interview Pop Smoke and he got murdered two days later. Like, there's people who I've wanted to get their stories and and life happens. You see what I'm saying? And 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 with Keefe D, I didn't know how much longer he has. And this is such a an important story, and I got to get the first hand account of what led up to it, what happened in the car, and what happened afterwards. And this is going to go, you know, and I just feel that the, it's so historically significant that a hundred years from now, when you and I are gone, you know, and people are listening to Tupac's music and, and they're, they're learning about his murder and everything else like that, that KPD interview is, is the only firsthand account of what happened from, from the, the enemy side of things. You know, Shook, Shook could tell the story about what happened inside that car, even though he's never told it. And you don't know. Will Shook ever tell that side of the story? You know, in detail before he dies, who knows? But but I got I got part of that story, and I think that's probably why my favorite interview is that. So with with people coming at you all the time, you seem to have a very clear vision. You seem to have a very clear purpose of why you do what you do, and you do an extremely great job. And you have an understanding that long after I'm gone, this footage lives on. The fact that some people may not appreciate you, what you're doing in real time, does it discourage you? I understand you're in business. You, you, you have, this is what you built. It makes millions of dollars annually. But is there a part of you that feels like a victim if you know for lack of a better word when people are Vlad is working with the feds and Vlad's a culture vulture and Vlad's not from the culture whatever they may say you seem to have a real good grasp of the fact that this is so much larger than Vlad how does it make you feel when people come at you like that I mean look no one likes to be spoken of in a negative manner right like no one likes it <laughs> uh but there is a higher purpose to it there is a business around it where like i said there's a dozen people that i essentially provide 100 percent of their income like like there's literally you know and, and when the when the the quarantine start happening one of the, the the things that i'm most proud of as, as, a, as a business owner was that none of my employees got laid off. 
nobody had their salary cut. They still retain all their full benefits. Um, I, I got to have, you know, people work from home so they were in a safe environment. Uh, in fact, we even increased, you know, we're now hiring more people uh, during this time. And and it just, you know, the fact that we, we had built up a stable business over that time helped out all the people that worked for me, whereas everyone else, you know, was firing people, slashing salaries, you know, cutting benefits and, and so forth. So if, if all these things, you know, a dozen people get employed, Millions of people get to watch every day and tell me about how, how their lives got changed from, from watching these interviews and the things that they've learned. You know, I, I, I have a comfortable lifestyle myself. I get to wake up every morning and do what it is that I want to do. I get to talk to who I want to talk to and not talk to who I don't want to talk to. All that. And the only downside is I get called a culture vulture or a fed every so often. I think it's a pretty, it's a pretty good trade off. I think most people would, would take my, <laughs> would, would trade places with me if, 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 you know, if you weigh the positives and the negatives uh, around so, it. So, so that's not keeping you up at night? No, man, it's not, it's not keeping me up at night. Got it. Before we wrap, I want to talk about your iHeart deal. Mm-hmm. Why now? First off, what, what does the deal include and why now? Well, the the iHeart deal. I mean, essentially, we haven't had our our um, content on the streaming audio platforms in many, many years. Uh, I was working with another uh, company way back when, but it, it really just proved to be unprofitable. So, so we shut it all down. And a lot of people would hit me up and say, "Yo, I wish I could listen to your pod, you know, to your interviews in my car on the way to work." But it's not on Spotify. It's not on Apple Podcasts. It's not on iHeart. Um, so we had already been in in, uh, in process of closing a deal uh, with another company to to bring our um, you know uh, our our interviews onto onto the streaming audio platforms, and then um, you know after me and Charlemagne started to talk again, um, he was telling me about iHeart, and he was like, "Oh, let me um, let me let me um, you know you should talk to them before you decide what you want to do." So when I started talking to iHeart, they basically um, agreed to just put up a, a, a much, a much way bigger marketing budget than this other company that I was working with. And they were really like, yo, we're going to keep marketing and pushing this platform through all of our other podcasts in order to make your, your podcast pop off. And, you know, they, they were putting like the muscle behind, behind that corporation because iHeart is a pretty big corporation. So as we continue to talk, I'm like, okay, th- th- this looks like a, this looks like a pretty good deal. This looks like, you know, a better deal than what I was talking about before. And, um, you know, I think it's time that we, we, we bring this, uh, this content to Spotify and, and, and Apple podcasts and so forth. So that's why, that's why we decided to go with iHeart and, um, you know, we launched it a few weeks ago. And, and we're, I'm starting to see the build up now uh, with the listeners and so forth. But it's just like everything else; it, it takes a while to build up. You know, it's not just like you, you press a button and suddenly a million people start listening a month. You got to build up the audience, just like we've done with the YouTube audience, like we've done with the Facebook audience, like we've done with the website audience. You know, and, and all, all of our social media as well. Um, you know, it was all just person by person, clip by clip, interview by interview, year after year. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.